Hello, this is Jenny Clark with Solvability, and today's episode on what's up with Mitch is, his question is, how do I make sure each business line is profitable? So Mitch is my fictional government contractor, federal contractor that's been working in the federal market for several years now, mostly services, but he's actually got some other stuff going on. He's got some managed services, and he's got some training services, and he's got some equipment sale. So his question is, how do I make sure each business line is profitable? Great question, Mitch. Mitch is a bottom line kind of guy. He always says, Jenny, I just want it all to work. So here's his question. Is there a way to see the business lines and margins separately? Yes. Sometimes inside your accounting software, there's ways to break that out. But at the same time that we're trying to break that out, we want to make it something that's simple something that could be monitored, something that someone in your accounting department would be able to um, create in a spreadsheet, or if it's possible, we'd want to program it into your accounting software so it's organized that way. A lot of them have organizations or divisions or something like that that will allow us to do it. Sometimes, though, we have to use account numbering schemes to do that. It is really important, especially if you're doing some, some amount of value-added resale, you want to know how much margin you're making on the equipment, but you also want to take into account the people that you're having to configure that equipment, to determine what to order, to figure out how to quote it, to um, send the quotes up to the customer, to get the equipment ordered so it can be drop shipped or if it's brought to your office so it can be configured and repackaged and delivered. Any of those costs have to be considered as part of that product line. Okay, maybe the other part of your product line is just nothing but straight staffing or recruiting. Then you're going to have the cost of the recruiter. You're going to have the cost of whatever website you're doing to go get that information. You're going to have whatever your process is for um, applicant tracking or people applying or things like that, which is really more of an overall human resources factor. But obviously, it's going to be a different set of costs than it was for your value-added resale. Maybe you've got a commercial product line and a government product line, or you do the same services, but some for commercial companies and some for federal. Well, the federal contracting stuff, you've got to be able to prove how you came up with your pricing when you're doing your proposal. Maybe they'll do a review, DCAA. You may not have to be fully compliant, but you do need to be able to answer the questions when they come out and do um, review the proposals or when you get to the point where you might have um, be required to be DCA compliant because you've got cost plus work, that's going to be different than how you treat your commercial work. And it may be that you have a separate sales force for your commercial work. It may be that it's shared. It might be that you've got a program manager that manages both product lines and you need to allocate that program manager's time across both. Yes, there's a way to see business lines and product and margins separately, but it's got to be designed into your accounting system. It takes some time to go through that process and get that worked out. And then you usually have, you have to leave your history the way it was and say, going from this point forward, here's how we're going to report. And it just takes time to get that all classified until it's meaningful. But I've done it successfully with a number of different accounting systems, including with QuickBooks, not QuickBooks Online, but QuickBooks Desktop or Enterprise. Are we charging enough so that each business line pays its way? That is a really important question because you want to be able to prove to yourself that on the people that you're selling as professional services or butts and seats, whatever you want to call it, you can tell that each person is generating enough margin to, come to cover their cost. When you do an analysis person by person, if you see somebody that's out of line, they're making way more profit than probably you should have, or they're um, not, frequently what will happen is you'll take a look and say, are they in the right labor category or what's going on? Um, the other thing might happen is maybe they should be on a different contract instead of that one because their skill level is very, is very high and it's probably higher than that contract needs, so you need to move them to someplace where they're on a higher billing rate. Another question is, when I'm asking that is, I've got certain costs that I have to incur in order to be a value-added reseller. I took all of the time to become a partner with all of these reseller companies, develop those relationships. That took a lot of cost. That cost doesn't benefit 
um, or cost anything to the Federal Services Division or the Commercial Services Division. So how do I work that out? Because otherwise, if you don't spend a lot of time thinking about this, you're really not having the information you do to make the right decisions because you're average every, averaging everything together. It's more like you're subsidizing one line to the other. The same thing as if, if you ever gone to dinner with a bunch of people and um, you know you sat back there and had ice water and a salad and the people at the other end ordered you know seven bottles of wine and had desserts and all these other things and you're like oh my gosh get me out of here and then it comes time for the check and they're like oh just divide it up by ten you're like heck no I don't want to divide it up by ten don't do that in your business identify the costs that are specific because you're gonna have different rates of growth but you also want to have certain things that is steady revenue and that's your baseline of business and that really funds some of the other growth so these are things you need to be thinking about when you're getting up to those more mature stages about where do you really want to be and how do you want to go there how do I get more of the easy money like resale and referral fees we all want easy money I wish there was easy money I like that term um, almost as much as I like low-hanging fruit because I can never grab onto that I people tell me it's all there but I don't see it so easy money like resale and referral fees um, you're gonna have to have relationships in order for that to work and um, as a government contractor the referral fees and, and resale type stuff is going to be on either products or it's going to be on the commercial side of the business and there are ways to do that but you're probably going to want to have separate product line to track that to make sure that you're not intermingling any of that unrelated cost in the middle of your government contracting business because it'll look funny and um, you just you probably just want to have it isolated but it becomes a big issue because whenever you're trying to start up a new commercial product line it sucks up a lot of cash takes a while to do and at the same time the um, you're trying to invest in business development Bit, bit of proposal money on your federal you're, it's all coming out of the same bank account so how are you going to allocate that resource how are you going to fund them both what do I have to put in place to support each business line and really I've already described this a little bit about if you're gonna have a placement company you're gonna have a bunch of recruiters if you're going to have a company that a part of your company that does has its own location and has to have a um, secure facility that's gonna have a different different cost set sometimes you can physically isolate that and identify the cost separately other times it's very difficult to do that and you really need to take a look at how you're going to allocate and it might be square footage or different things like that to make it so that you're really identifying shared cost correctly between the using organizations last question do I have too much overhead this comes up a lot nobody really asks me if they have too much overhead they assume that they don't they assume that everybody operates this way and that would be true except that you really want to take a look at your business lines and take a look at the top paid people in the company and sadly especially those that are indirect and as a person that's typically indirect, usually a, an accounting finance person is part of the GNA or corporate function. Um, that's really the place where people first look to cut because the people that are billable are generating revenue for every hour they work. They are the products we're selling. They are our deliverable. And as long as they're productive and they're making their margin, we're making money on them all day long. Do I have too much overhead? It could be that you have people in your organization that um, aren't as productive as they need to be, or you're going to have to consolidate some positions to try to streamline the processes. It could be that you need to put in automation to reduce some of the paperwork or some of the steps involved to make it easier. But the most overlooked area of overhead to me is to do what I call a labor utilization or labor productivity analysis take every single person in the company write down their salary what they do um, what their pay rate is what their annual salary is what percent direct they are what percent of their time is they charge to overhead and GNA and take a look at it overall I've always been told a rule of thumb is a company needs to be about 80% billable 
in order as a government contractor in order for them to be able to be profitable. Now, I don't know if it's 80 or 85. Um, I'm sure there's a mathematical way to figure that out, but I've never quite done it. But I can sure tell when you've got too many executives that are not, that you're having to pay for their cost out of what everybody else is generating. And what that usually calls for is a reorganization or split the companies or do something different um, because you really might be chasing too many different things or you need to make, uh, take some of those executives and assign them differently. But there are definitely ways that you can identify what's my excess overhead and what do I have to do. There are ratios that you can look at. Um, there are um, the other, the one that I found a long time ago that was most obvious was at a company that had um, some very specialized IT people working on um, government contracts and then they had some um, civil engineers that were building highway projects and the professional engineers had professional liability insurance that was being averaged over the federal division and so it made the federal provision look unprofitable. When we isolated it into two separate business lines, it was much clearer we were not charging enough to our highway customers and um, we were we were overloading the um, the federal work. So Mitch, Mitch is unstoppable. Are you unstoppable? You know where you want to go. Solvability can help you get there with the cost and pricing intelligence you need to accelerate and scale your business. Get started with our free wrap rate calculator. You can download that at our website. What that allows you to do, it's a simple little spreadsheet that shows you how to calculate Here's my direct labor, here's my overhead, my G&A, and my profit, here's what a billing rate or a fully loaded labor rate or a fully burdened labor rate with or without fee, that's what it needs to look like. Or the other way it can be calculated is your prime tells you here's the billing rate you're allowed to use. You can use the multiplier to divide back and figure out the max you can afford to hire somebody for. So the wrap rate calculator you can download, it comes with a little explanation of how it works and it's the, play, the starting point, but the next complicated thing is how do you come up with your own company's overhead and G&A? Because everybody's companies is different, but you need to know what competitive is, and you also need to know what you're going to be doing to affect, reduce your overhead as you grow. If you want the wrap rate calculator, you can go to our website. It's solvability.com. That's S as in Sam, O-L-V as in Victor, and the word ability.com. And um, the other thing, though, is if you've got something that's more complicated or more urgent, send me a text. So it's 256-882-6276, and tell me your name, your company, what your urgent issue is, and let's set up a call and see what we can do.